most valuable thing. Most valuable thing. Most valuable thing. Most valuable thing. So all these people obviously dominate, you know. Um. Oh wait a minute. We write them says. Isn't it because it's like we draw a line? Yeah, we have this function. Does that make sense? Right. When you yeah. see this, what should you think? Oh, all the x y pairs. So it's simply a bunch. If we found all the x y pairs, we get a picture. So I just draw my favorite picture. Right. So it's just. Okay. Like negative times negative positive. The mean value, how many slopes are there? Infinite. Infinite. Mm -hmm. The mean value theorem says if you find the secant slope. I know what this makes so much more sense now. And then what would be after that? Would possibly positive? Or it changes here, here, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you find the secant slope between the endpoints, mm -hmm. one of these tangents, or maybe more of them, but at least one, will have the same slope value. Good job. Good work. Wait, wait, what will have the same slope value? So, how many slopes are there here? Oh, on the curves, like one point will have the same slope as, as the secant slope? slope. Yep. Okay. So, why does that mean finding these points would be a good idea? Um, because they're not. You're doing fine. It's just, it's all back to this sign. Oh! The more whys you understand, the more whys you will be. Um, you just have to yes. know the why. Oh, okay, so it could help. I'm, I'm probably figuring somewhere. Here it doesn't matter if you get short, because I'm here to help you. It's just when you're alone, it's yeah. okay. Um, you're just guessing when you're alone, it's you're just confusing yourself. I want to say that you want to have the x and y pairs for both of them, so then you can get the derivative of the equation, plug it, and get the slopes for both. Oh. Or am I thinking the first part was good. Do. Somebody else will help you. You want to find the y value here and here. Why? Why do we need this y value? Secant slope. Secant slope. slope. I'm going to compute oh. the secant slope using these y values. This is why I tell you, you're gonna, you'll be fine. Just keep doing what you're doing, really. I know you get discouraged. Everyone does. But you think really well. You put things together well. You're very persistent. You're very patient. You'll be fine. Just keep working. Because we want to find the change in y over the change in mm -hmm. x. Oh. Okay, you should get comfortable with these symbols. Everybody get comfortable with these symbols? So f of 0 and f of 2. So this is the way to symbolically write that the y coordinate here is found by plugging a zero into L. So get used to that, it's really helpful. So now we want you to write it. Um usually like oh I don't know. Wait, do I change the X or change the Yeah, that's what you want me to write. Because good notation is going to lead to better test scores. We want to practice having good notation. Um, I want to plug in f zero. Fine. So just tell me what to write. Okay. So f zero equals zero. I guess. <laughs> it's a little hard to say. I get that. Just don't forget the parentheses. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Just a one. And then overall, that'll be zero. <coughs> and now for the second equation, we want to plug in F2. Oh, OK. <laughs> so now we write is 2 to this step 8. Yeah, 8 minus. minus no, 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 no. Eight, sorry. Eight. Oh, eight. It's eight again. <laughs> so that's zero again. So zero, zero. So what do the zeros mean? Um, so that means y. So like for the y coordinate, both of them are just zero. So it means there's no change in slope. Or Perfect. Change, yeah. change in y. So good thing to write down is come over here and write that down. Another cause of people getting stuck on AB problems is not writing enough. You try to keep track of too much in your head. Don't. 
you write it down. Okay, we've done a little bit of, we've done a little step, now we think big picture. Which means we think of the problem from the beginning. C is a number that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem for this formula. But now we have more information. We have these points, so now what do we do? So now you do change in Y over change in X? Because that's finding Y. Um, that's why it's a secant slope. Right, you, you continue to keep track of why you are doing it. Just keep track of why. So, and notice, everything you are doing in this problem so far is not calculus. It's stuff you have done for years. Mm -hmm. You just got to learn to understand why you're doing it. In previous classes, they didn't demand that you know why, you just had to do it. Here you have to know why. Um, for the change in x, since it's <coughs> just the change, sorry, this is going to sound dumb. No, well, can it? It can't be negative, right? Because it's just the change, or oh, the change is relative. Yes. So from this x to this x, how much did x change? Two. Good. If I said from this x to this x, how much did x change? Two. So Negative yeah. two, actually. Oh, oh, we're actually. Yeah, it oh. does depend. But as long as you're consistent, it won't matter. So I just left, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So, so if it were, let's say, um... So you'd have to compare from this x to this x, and this y to this oh, y. Oh, that's what you mean by consistent. consistent. Oh, because then or that makes sense. Or this x to this x, and this y to this y. Okay. Just that's don't go like this x to this x, and then this y to this y. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the positive and negative is important. Mm -hmm. It's over two. Mm -hmm. Good. What does that mean? And what does that mean in the context of the whole big picture? So then the one slope on the curve that matches is zero. Perfect. So one of the curve, one of the slopes of the curve, so maybe more, but at least one of the, we're all set, one of the slopes of the curve will be zero as well. Mm -hmm. So now what? Don't we have zero then? Oh, oh, I think careful, I know. Careful, careful. Oh, I, where, oh. So the slope we're looking for is zero. But the answer we're looking for is not a slope. What kind of answer are we looking for? I want to say zero to the, wait, what's C? So what do you mean by oh, this? Is not, like this goes back to something I've been saying a lot lately, trying to keep track of what's F versus F prime? What's F versus F prime versus the equation of a line tangent? Yeah. What's X versus Y? What's secant slope versus tangent slope? Wait, so what are we looking for? The problem says C is a number that satisfies, that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Okay. So wouldn't that slope make it work though? You're okay. Your thinking is not wrong. It really isn't. Okay. It's just not consistent with what they're, what they're, so this is just terminology. Okay. So you don't want to change, you don't want to think, oh, I'm thinking incorrectly. You're not. They just decided to use the terminology in a different way. Okay. okay. The C they're talking about is an X coordinate experience. Okay. So that so you go, oh no big deal. I'm just learning so I don't mm -hmm. have as much experience. Okay, so okay. That's what C is. C is an X coordinate. Okay. Somewhere between here and here. Oh so they're looking at where is the slope is right. Zero. Correct. Yeah. They're not saying they're not saying what's, what's the magic it? slope. They're looking at where the where slope, the slope is. Oh, okay. Now I have seen mean value problems that they turn the words all around of course and instead of having you figure out where C is, they actually do ask you to find the magic slope. Okay. <laughs> and the wording will be different. But here, this, this special value C is an X coordinate where the slope will be zero. But how do you find where it is? Um, we get the equation that is to find slopes of the red line, so that means we're going to take the derivative of F. Right. Wait, wait, and wait, you wait, said wait. that really well. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, that's the key is you said that so well. It wasn't like, oh, I do this and I do that. It was like, perfect. I have this equation, which is for finding all these points. So if I take the derivative of the equation for finding the points, I get a new equation. Oh, then you find all the slopes. And if you plug in zero, though, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, just to save a little space, can I erase this? Yeah. So what is f prime? 3x squared minus 4x. 
and specifically said Three precisely minus what two. what is this? It's what? Say again. Of what? Better to say any. This is more precise. This is providing any slope of what? No, of f. Oh, yeah. F prime is the formula for finding any slope of f. You have to work. This again, say it again. What's this? Define, the formula to find all the slopes. Find any slope or all of them. I, I like any because we never find all of them. That would be. <laughs> 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 find one. And then I'm trying to find my slope of your brain. Yeah, true. So this is for finding any slopes on the red yes. or pink yes. or whatever. So now what? We plug in zero. Zero for where? X. For X. And then. A common error. What is zero representing? Oh, so is the slope so it's actually. We Plug it in on the left side of the equation. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess I was thinking of the game, but I forgot. Wait, why don't you Because Because this is the whole equation to find slope 3x squared minus 4x. So f prime x is like pretty much it's what the slope. slope will equal once you yes. plug in x. Oh. So that's, we need to plug in 0 for that. I like how you said that. This is what the slope will be once you plug in x. But we already know what the slope is supposed to be. So you for, for the prime of x. Yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah, it makes no sense at all to plug this zero in for this x. Because what is this zero representing? A slope. What is the x representing? point on the graph. You don't put a slope where a point goes. Make sense? Good. But you can plug in like the like two or zero. In for where? In for the other end. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah, I can go here and say let's put in in fact if you put a zero here, what do you discover? Zero. What does that mean? The slope at x equals zero on the pink is zero. Mm -hmm. You can do that. That's legal. We want to figure out at what x will the slope be zero. So we need to solve this. With a calculator, you just graph this, graph this, find where they intersect. Without a calculator, you have to remember a flashcard. Factor because so it's quadratic. Mm -hmm. What an x. Leaving? 3x, 3x minus 1. Perfect. Now you use what's called this, I think it's called this, I'm not going to name it. Zero property of multiplication, but who cares? It's a mouthful. <laughs> I have two factors multiplying. They have to equal zero. One has to be zero. zero. So what would make this factor zero? Zero. zero. Yeah. But if you put an X, if you put a zero here for this X, you also put it here. So if these are both zeros. This will be something. This will be zero. Right? I don't care what that is. Zero times whatever is zero. So one solution. Remember, solving an equation means find the x that makes the equation true. A little hard to see which x will make this equation true. Here it's really easy. x equals zero is one of them. What's another x that will make this true? Four thirds. Four thirds. Did you see the four thirds? She she looks, yeah, she looks here and says, oh. Oh, so you plus four. Oh, and then if, I, if I'm concentrating here, I don't care what this is. So I just kind of ignore that for a minute. And I go, oh, look, 3x minus 4 needs to be 0. Oh, yeah, I remember that. 3x equals 4, so x is 4 thirds. So if I have a 4 thirds here and a 4 thirds here, no one cares about this. 
as this will be zero. So I have two solutions, two places where the slope of the pink line will be zero. So it could be zero or four thirds. There's a reason why they do not have zero and four thirds as an answer, because you never circle two. Mm -hmm. It's because when you find a slope, you're always doing it by saying, I want to find the slope right here. So I have to find the secant to the right, secant to the left, and then make the secants really short. That's how you find slope. That's how the formulas on the green sheet work. Okay? You just don't see that because it's just a formula. Well, with the mean value theorem, they restrict you to going from here to here. So you have to pretend that this function does not continue. Oh. It's just the end. And then you can't do the you can't find a the slope at the end point because you can't do a secant that way. Okay. You can't do a secant that way, so you can't find the slopes at the end. So zero will never, so the endpoints will never satisfy the mean value theorem because I can't find the slopes at the end point. Wait, what do you mean by um, if you did like u zero, you can't find the secant slope on the other side? Like, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to confuse on like one time. So it's okay right. that we talked long ago. If I want to find the slope at a, mm -hmm. I create a secant slope to the right and a secant slope to the left. Oh, yes. Yeah, and so I shorten them until they are basically the same. Mm -hmm. Well, with the mean value theorem, they are telling you, you don't get to look at points to the left. You stop right yeah, there. So I can't make a secant slope. slope. So I can't find slopes at the end points. So zero is not a valid conclusion of the mean value theorem. Mm -hmm. It's four thirds of the end. Yeah. Good work. So when you start off the question, could you just automatically mark off A and E? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the mean value there will not be satisfied at the two endpoints. Well done. Good job, you guys. Good work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for going.